and in your own time bring your awareness and attention back by opening your eyes but also honor the fact that you need to be in this state for a few minutes more give that to yourself no one wants to come back. <laughs> okay, now just out of interest, let's have you take another little Polaroid of how you feel. And see if the Polaroid now is a little different than where you started. I think we could call that metaphysical. And the energy in the room has changed. The presence is different. And you did it. So we all have that ability to heal ourselves. And when we talk about healing, there's a range of ways that we can talk about healing. What is healing? And hopefully this afternoon we can look at that from a number of different perspectives. My perspective of healing changes all the time. I keep seeing that whatever my definition of healing was, it was a little too small. I've got to keep making it larger. And it may or may not involve the cure of a specific condition, but I'd like to make a distinction here between a cure of something that we have. If you have a headache and you don't have the headache anymore, that can be healing, but it's also a cure. It's a beginning and an end and a completion. Healing is a continuum. And it is becoming more of who we truly are. And here we are at a very interesting time in history. The topic of this talk was evolutionary health. What is evolving? What is evolution? What's changing? I do know that 20 years ago, we possibly might not have been here because not so many people were open to the word metaphysics. When I first started doing massage at Lakeridge Tennis Club in 1983, people were not open to the word massage. They were not open to the word yoga. They were not open to the word meditation. Um, it was still looked upon as something to be frightened of. Now remember, we talked about the first chakra at the base of the spine, fear. It's where we have the fear of what might happen if I open up to this, well, what might happen? And unfortunately, religi religion, um, and again, not to offend anyone's beliefs, religion's done a great job of putting the fear of God into us. That if we believe the wrong things, and we do the wrong things, we're going to go to hell and burn for a long time. Good thing to be frightened of. Um, albeit only a product of your imagination. But something's changing. Humanity is awakening to the fact that we are not just physical beings. Not only are we not just physical beings, we do not need to go to an intermediary to have direct communication with the source of life. That that is available to each one of us and that our healing progression is an awakening to that in all of the different ways that it can come. So my journey in my exploration of this has been for quite some number of years. Last year, um, in fact the year before, I'll go back to the year before, I had heard about John of God. And I had this image of a healer sort of up in a mountain in a cave. And I'd heard that he does surgery with rusty knives on people's eyes and I thought that's sort of cool. 
Um, and so I had this image of people making this long pil pilgrimage up the side of this mountain to get to this man in a cave who had this rusty knife and he was going to do some surgery and then miraculously they would be healed. And there was a presentation at a fair in the convention center and one of the photographers who lived in Brazil with John of God, Karen Leffler, was giving a slideshow presentation of some photographs, so I went to see it. And it was quite astounding. And after the slideshow presentation, I talked to Karen, and she had books that her photographs were in. And I bought a book, and she transcribed it for me. And when she handed it to me, I felt a jolt of energy go up my hand all the way to my elbow, and it felt like fire ants, and I almost dropped the book. And she looked at me, and she said, they're working with us. I said, yes, I can feel it. That was my first introduction to John of God. And it was my first awareness. I want to know what this is. So it took me a year to organize the trip. I went down to Brazil with my wife last February, uh, just about a year ago, and discovered what this was about. And the Brazilian culture is very different from our culture. They have a different template of understanding. The spiritist realm, as they call it, the invisible realms, are very much embraced in the entire culture. 70% of the Roman Catholic congregation in Brazil attend some type of spiritist um, center. And in, in Brazil, it's common, if you have a physical complaint, an emotional complaint, a psychological complaint, a business problem, a relationship problem, you can go to a spiritist center. You can sit down with someone who is trained to communicate with the invisible realms, and they give you advice from the other side of the veil. Sometimes that advice might be that you need to go see a physical doctor. Other times not. But the cultural embrace of the other realms that we would call the angelic realm. John of God refers to some of the beings that work with him as entities. And we have, in this culture, a sort of, the word entity is a little bit spooky. <laughs> you know, it's like Halloween. Um, so we can call them angels, we can call them entities, we can call them spirit guides, we can call them whatever we want. But there is an awareness that there are literally unlimited realms of, to us, invisible realms that are assisting us all of the time. And if we open ourselves to it, that assistance is tangible. The evolution of our consciousness is the fact that we are now willing to say, I agree. I am willing to open myself to that fact that this might be real. One of the beautiful things about John of God is that he takes your belief system and totally destroys it. Many, um, many, many doctors have gone down and John of God invites them to be with him as he does things that apparently are miraculous and impossible. He will take a scalpel he will have someone stand up with no anesthetic, he will slice into their body, he will put his hand inside, he will take stuff out, he will stitch them back up, very often there's no blood, and very often the person's cancer disappears. That's one of many, many, many stories of what he does. And the doctors who stand next to it walk away and say, this is outside our reality. This should not be happening. This can't be happening. And the reason that John of God does it is to show that there is no such thing as a restriction when it comes to the divine force. God is capable of doing anything. So thousands of people a day go to see John of God. Most of them do not receive physical surgeries, some do. Most re receive spiritual surgeries. What was amazing for me 
is that I got to watch John of God do three physical surgeries where he opened people up, where he does scrape their eye, their cornea, which ophthalmologists said should be the most excruciatingly painful thing. He takes eight-inch Kelly clamps and he puts them up people's nose to the point where the doctors say they should go through the brain. And as a result, people find that they are healed from many, many, many different conditions. He does it to show that there is no limitation and that what we think of as possible is only a very limited <coughs> belief system. I got to watch that and what was even more amazing is that I saw it with my eyes closed. And I saw it from a different realm of reality. It was one of the most profound experiences I ever had. And we can talk a little bit more about John of God. I do have a little video um, which we can put on. Um, then we can, <clears throat> we can take this. Um, I know that we've got, um, we've got a fair amount of time, excuse me. <clears throat> so I want, again, I want this to be about your questions, where you might be curious as to where we have traveled here. Um, but I think this actually might be a good time to see if Sue would put the other technical piece on. Um, it, we're just going to look at a little five-minute clip of a video 